Oh, hey everybody. So I'm going to talk about some model based definitions today. Um, so I've already got a part open here and all that is is uh, on the annotate tab you have these options here which is a uh, geometric annotation, general annotation, and notes. Um, I guess you could say this is kind of like putting if you've used AutoCAD it's kind of like the difference of parametric uh, dimensions versus annotative. Um, what these do is essentially if I were to hover over one is it puts a dimension like you're used to uh, except for it does not control things. You know like when you're in a sketch these dimensions they directly correlate to the size of the part. <coughs> well um, with these they actually just give you visual information. So like if I were to go and uh, just hit this dimension button and uh, you know choose say the circle for instance instead it looks different when I dimension uh, it has like this plane that you can see it's showing like as far as where I've clicked it uh, when I click to place, you know, you have to either hit enter or the check mark up there. Uh, so now we've got this, and if I double click it, you know, it shows the the brackets here, whatever they're called, less than equals or less than greater sign. I could type, but it's not going to do anything. Um, so it's pretty much non-editable, and um, you know, the intent is basically if I were to open this part up, I can see this information without having to go through and dig through each sketch and look and see, you know, what size this is. So I don't have to double click, uh, you know, the hole itself or whatever. So it's really just giving you visual information without having to go through and uh, dig at all. So what I think this personally is most useful for is, um, you know, when you're working in the actual drafting field, a lot of times you're sharing parts and assemblies and stuff like that. And, uh, you know, depending on where you work, a lot of times there may be somebody who's not as skilled or is less skilled. They're more skilled than you. And, uh, you know, you may find yourself uh, double checking their work or they may be double checking your work. And having these dimensions is a good way to verify accuracy really quickly. Now, granted, you know, if they're uh, really particular, they're going to also check for fully defined sketches and whatnot. But this just helps with the verification process. And it may be just as simple as a, um, a standard part has changed and now you're comparing the old one to the new one, you know. Uh, but it, it does help to have. So I'm just going to demonstrate some of the uh, tools, the ones that I use. I actually don't use the majority. I pretty much only use dimension and uh, hole and thread. But I'll show you how to use them. Um, I, I'll go with hole and thread first since it's super easy. <laughs> uh, so you click on it. Click on the cylindrical body. Uh, you can click either, but whenever you're clicking these items, it places them based on the plane you're on. So like when I click this, if you notice, it's on the uh, top edge of the circle. So I actually could like right click and choose um, select annotation plane or I could hold shift and click and I could choose for it to be down on this bottom arc if you can see there it's kind of hard to see. Yeah. Um, so that's pretty much the whole deal with those is you're pretty much like choosing an item and I'm going to put it back up top. You're choosing an item and then placing it but you can also realign it if you don't like where it's at by right clicking and uh, choosing a different plane or holding shift and click. So. In this one, I would just click, and just to show it again without all the um, repositioning talk, <clears throat> I would just click the item, click place, either hit enter or click the check mark. And actually, enter doesn't work apparently on this one. <laughs> um, but one cool thing I really think is the positioning thing. So, say, you know, uh, for whatever reason you've got all your dimensions aligned to one spot, being able to um, change spots is nice and they also have candidate plane I'm not sure what that does uh, so usually if I'm gonna right click I'll just use one of these three actually I don't even really use a line geometry I actually just use uh, toggle alignment and select annotation plane but I could also just hold shift and choose uh, it's looking for a face so I could even do something wild and do it way up here and now what it shows when I place it is <laughs> you know oddly enough that this little annotation is lying on the plane of this face essentially uh, even though if I'm at a top view you know it's perfectly aligned to that hole so uh, it's kind of useful at times repositioning the plane not necessarily in that case but what I find is doing linear dimensions you know because like I'm gonna go ahead and use a dimension command now but you know say I were to go and click faces and then go like to this edge well first of all um, you know that that one looks fine it's aligned to this edge but if I choose a face to a face, it probably won't be so perfect. So if I hit, 
the uh, oh, got to turn the command back on apparently every time. If I go and hit a dimension now, look at what it does. It does like this random terrible point. Well, you know, I can't really do much now because it's already been edited, but I can right click edit and then I think from here. Ah. Yeah, okay. So you can choose a uh, change annotation plane and then bam, just like that. Now granted that was after the fact. Um, so now I have to hit OK, but all I did for that was right click, change annotation plane. So you can change these afterwards, which is cool. And then if you notice this 0.25, well, it's oriented the wrong way. You can also change that using a uh, toggle alignment. And all this does is it flips at 90 degrees. So, you know, I could click it again. It would go back to how it was. Uh, pretty straightforward, really. But, you know, so like... More or less, what these are good for is just showing all the details, and you can go through and adjust as needed. In this case, instead of doing it after the fact, I'm going to show that you can right-click, select the plane, choose his face, and place it, click, and there you go. So, you know, um, is it super useful? I don't know. That's uh, <laughs> it's for you to decide, but it is, you know, convenient sometimes. Uh, I find that if you want really good accuracy without having to choose the plane every time, it helps to do edges, though. So if I were to choose, you know, well, that was a bad click. <laughs> if I were to choose this edge and this edge, it's always going to line it to this edge. But if you notice, now it's going this direction. But what if I want it to go uh, 90 degrees different? That's where you still have to go in. And let's do shift this time. How about that? I'll hold shift, click that face, and now it'll let me position it here. So, I mean, you know, the edges do help. You still end up having problems because then you have to change. Uh, it may choose the wrong default position because it's an edge. You know, so it, in this case, it went this way. If I would have chose the whole edge, it would have been a coin toss which way it went between this direction and that direction. But um, one thing I haven't really tried, let's try it. Um, dimension to a circle. So it works out pretty good. It shows the center point. You know, I, I worried because of the measure tool. You know, the measure tool sometimes will grab an edge or... Uh, the center point or some kind of crazy in between so in this case it did aligned to that center uh, so if you did want it there you could hit OK or as silly as it would be you could choose uh, you know this face here and put it in line with the rest <laughs> but then you end up with this kind of a uh, goofy line that's trajecting all the way over here so it's up to you how you go about it um, other than that, I haven't really used surface texture, but uh, obviously it allows you to put the mark on there. Um, tolerances, if you had them, you know, that would be the, um, the tool would be tolerance feature. And essentially all it would do is um, put it on there. I don't think you can adjust much. If you did have multi-element, it would allow you to choose uh, like bold, both parts there, but I don't. So I'm just going to turn that back on. And, uh, yeah, I mean, you know, you would basically play around with these and, and do whatever you need to do, but there's really not, um, much need for that in what I do. So I'm not going to really talk about the, uh, d tolerances, but, you know, technically I think I do have them in some of my sketches. Um, maybe not this one. Let me look real close here. No. Yeah, none. Uh, but technically, you know, I think in the actual model there is a tolerance there. It's just I didn't put it in the in the dimension because usually it doesn't really do much to the model and it doesn't really seem to pull over in drawing, so uh, I didn't include it. But yeah, it would pull it there if I were to dimension a width and I had tolerance, it would pull it. Um, so then we have leader text, you know, for whatever reason, if I wanted to click this face and uh, type in stuff. You know, pretty straightforward, just like an AutoCAD. It just takes wherever you clicked on a face and creates a area for you to type in info. So I guess if you know you're working really hard on this and you, um, you know, we're trying to be really particular, you could be like, oh yeah, like this line controls everything or, or something like that. You know, whatever. Oh, and if you notice also, like this still works like a regular dimension, like when you're sketching. Uh, pretty straightforward. You just grab it, click it, pull. Technically, you can do it in one go if you just hover and make sure you've got that little movement uh, sideways D-pad, whatever you want to call that. <laughs> um, and then, you know, you've got general notes, I guess. Let's see how that works. I've really never used this one. This is probably what I would be more likely to use. It puts it in a, one of your regions of your viewing window. 
I don't say stuff stuff. Okay, that's actually really freaking cool. <laughs> uh, so it puts it in a corner. Um, but I don't really see a way to select it per se. And naturally when I scroll it stays there. So um, that part's kind of strange. But actually that can be really useful. You know, you could put that there saying uh, part up to date. Or if you're going through a bunch of them. Or uh, you could even have like the stock number there or something. Yeah, that's actually super useful. Take a note of that one. Uh, and if you ever decide you want to edit that one, since it doesn't let you actually click it, if you look in your browser, you may have noticed the annotations folder. If you expand it, each one of these is actually shown here. And you can, I think you can actually edit them as well, yeah, through here. So you could also uh, toggle your alignment as needed and change your annotation plane. <clears throat> you can even adjust precision, you know, go ahead and make it something way out there. So that part's pretty cool. Uh, I'm just going to undo that real quick. It was two places. But yeah, so you can go through and, and delete general note right there. Super useful. So, uh, you know, say for whatever reason you decide you don't like this stuff, you can always just go through and just can it all, you know. But I, I do think it's useful. Um, do I require it in my classes? Absolutely not. But uh, knowing you can do that, it's just another tool in your tool belt. So. Uh, take it all with a grain of salt and find out how you want to apply it. I think it's pretty useful, but it's not for everybody. So, um, And then as far as the last one here goes, <clears throat> the general profile note, I really don't use it. Um, but it, it also ties into tolerances, which is why I don't. Uh, so, you know, if anybody does have any info about that, feel free to share. And I can update this video. But for now, that's really all I use. And, um, you know, same with, I forgot to mention datum reference. Um, you know, again, that ties into your tolerances. Basically, you're choosing a point and everything is based off that datum. So, uh, for anybody who works in machine shop and does drafting, chime in, let me know how it's going, how that stuff works. No big deal. <laughs> uh, and you can also check your tolerances here. So, half of it is definitely devoted to that. Uh, but I find mostly, yeah, you're going to use these two. And then apparently maybe these two. I don't know. General notes growing on me already. <laughs> All right, everybody. Thanks for watching.